Nicholson here, and welcome back to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host, and on this show, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll be going over all of the day's movie news, as well as going over what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. Just as I was writing today's show notes, the brand new trailer for Guillermo del Toro's upcoming horror flick, Crimson Peak, has just dropped. Now, this is the second trailer. The first trailer was very much a teaser, kind of gave us a feeling of uh, of the tone of the movie and kind of, no, it, it was really just that. It really didn't give us anything. We didn't understand what the plot of the movie was or anything of that sort, but... Based on the images that we got, I speculated that Jessica Chastain's character was actually going to be one of these apparitions or ghosts or whatever it was, or maybe even Tom Hiddleston as well, and that they've been actually, you know, dead for centuries, and they might even be just vessels or, or something to that effect. And even so much in this trailer, we get that in spades. Like, we get more and more almost confirmation that that is indeed the case, which I... Okay, I gotta, I gotta say this. I, I did have a problem with the trailer but i love this trailer this is the type of movie that i've been wanting guillermo del toro to make for a while well i love pacific rim and it was a very entertaining movie and you know and, and i was kind of curious to see what he could have done with the hobbit or even uh, at the mountains of mandis crimson peak is the type of film that i felt that guillermo del toro needed to get back to a very gothic horror film a very psychological horror film that is still going to have loads and loads of blood on screen and just, you know, it's just going to terrorize you. And so, I mean, it, th this is the type of film that I've really wanted him to get back to. And now that he is, you know, I mean, this is just going to make me even that much more excited for Pacific Rim 2. Because he's kind of gotten this out of his system. He's gotten back to his roots. And now he's going to get to go back and play in his big sandbox. But just looking at some of the aspects of this trailer, like you see the shots of the ghost. And on some of the shots, you actually see her wearing or it wearing uh, what looks to be a very dark corset or, or black dress of, of sorts. And in the trailer, you see Jessica Chastain wearing the same thing. It's like a dark blue or a really dark greenish blue uh, corset dress. And that's very much what uh, that ghost looks like it's wearing. I mean, the, the out of all the shots, there are a couple. There's one right here. It's this big red tub. And you can kind of see it, like, I believe that that is blood, and that is one of the, the opened cages that you see in the trailer where the cage is being hit. Uh, and Tom Hiddleston says, never go below this level, because this house is obviously holding something. Now, the one thing that I hope it is, or the one thing that I hope it isn't, sorry, I hope that they don't say that the actual gates of hell, or whatever it is, is actually in the sub-basement of this house. That's the one thing that I hope doesn't happen, because that's been done too many times before. Um, but I, I do have a feeling that Guillermo del Toro has something really cool and unique in store for us. But just going back to that red, that red thing, you can see like the, the hands almost, or, or what looks to be some kind of a skeleton. Maybe it's some sort of like chemical or something. I don't know. Like there's so many questions that have been asked by this trailer and that's what I love about it. It didn't give away too much, but it asked a lot of questions. But then that gets back to my one problem that I have with the trailer was the fact that I do think that. It gave away too much in terms of Jessica Chastain's character because you can see her, you know, slashing at Mia Wasikowska's character through the elevator. Um, with Tom Hiddleston's character, you can see him uh, taking Charlie Hunnam's character down into that sub-basement of the house in the elevator. And Charlie Hunnam almost looks like he's in duress, like he's being taken there forcefully. So, it, it, to me, it looks like they're taking a little bit of the mystery away from the movie and really kind of showing us that, hey, these people are bad, but this movie's going to be about why they got bad or showing how they can act in society while still having this nefarious side to them or something of that sort. I, I still have no real idea of what's going to happen with this movie. Um, although it was really cool to go to the set because they actually shot for a day uh, in my hometown here of Kingston. And uh, it was actually really cool to go down to the set and see all of the you know, gothic turn-of-the-century uh, settings and uh, wardrobes and, and and the automobile, or, well, I don't even know if they had an automobile. I think they were all carriage, or horse and carriage. They might have had one of, like, the very first, you know, like, you had the little push lever. I can't, I forget what they were called, but Ford made them. Um, but, yeah, the, the only other thing that I can think of is that the ghosts in the movie, like, that, that the other shot, too, was that wheelchair, the empty wheelchair, and just as the shot's about to finish, you see like this aspir or this apparition just like, oh, and, and it's just, as soon as I saw that, like it, it, it freaked me out. It just, it got me, it, it, just, it scared me. Like it, it, 
it's one of the first films that's ever been able to do that in a long, long time. And that just makes me want to go and see it more. Like, I'm, I think I'm going to get freaked out by this. And someone with as much respect as I have for Guillermo del Toro, someone like him directing a movie like this just gives me that much more respect for it and that much more anticipation for it. So, I mean, you know, the, the questions still need to be answered. What is it that's actually locked up in those cages? What's hitting those cages? Um, you know, what the hell is that red blood monster or whatever it is that's in that giant cement tub or, what, or whatever it was? Um, you know, why is Charlie Hunnam being taken down into that sub-basement of the house by Tom Hiddleston forcefully? Lots of these questions have been asked. No answers have been given, which I love. This gets me intrigued. This gets me excited. I'm on board with this movie. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. The movie's going to be opening up on October 16th of this year. So if we do get more information about this topic, then I will definitely update you guys on here. Last week, Marvel Studios announced that production on Captain America Civil War had officially begun, and with it came the press release that showed the immense cast for this movie. So let's just break this down. We've got Chris Evans as Captain America, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow, Sebastian Stan as Winter Soldier, Anthony Mackie as Falcon, Paul Bettany as The Vision, Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye, Don Cheadle as War Machine, Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch, Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther, Emily Van Camp returning as Agent 13, Frank Grillo as the villain Crossbones, William Hurt as General Thunderbolt Ross, Daniel Bruhl as Baron Helmut Zemo, and Martin Freeman in an undisclosed role. Now, Spider-Man is also said to make an appearance in this movie. How the hell is this not Avengers? Like, this is an Avengers movie. The only people who are not included in this are Thor and Hulk. And I, I'm willing to bet that we're going to get a little banner cameo. Uh, well, maybe not. Um, you'll understand when you when you see Avengers. Um, I just, I don't know, when you see Avengers, you'll understand. Uh, um, but yeah, no, seriously, how is this not an Avengers movie? I mean, like even just listen to the, the uh, logline for the movie. Captain America Civil War picks up where Avengers Age of Ultron left off as Steve Rogers leads the new team of Avengers in their continued efforts to safeguard humanity. After another international incident involving the Avengers results in collateral damage, political pressure mounts to install a system of accountability and a governing body to determine when to enlist the services of the team. The new status quo fractures the Avengers while they try to protect the world from a new and nefarious villain. Now, Essentially, what's going to happen is they're going to come out and say that, well, you know, we need to say how you guys are going to be accountable for this. And also when you guys are actually going to be issued out, you can't just go out and fight when you want. We're going to actually say when you're going to go out and you're going to have Captain America and Tony Stark really divided on that. But more importantly, I'm really intrigued to see who's going to be on each other's side. Now, this is my theory. I do believe that while a couple of these people are going to be missing, because I don't have the exact uh, idea as to who is going to be on what side, but I believe on Iron Man's side, we're going to have War Machine, we're going to have Black Panther, we're going to have Hawkeye, Ant-Man, and General Ross. That's my prediction for his side. On Captain America, I have a feeling it's going to be Black Widow, Falcon, Vision, Winter Soldier, and Agent 13. Now, the only reason that I put Vision on there, I was originally going to put Vision on Iron Man's side, but it's because Vision is actually a part of the New Avengers, um, which means that he is actually under the command of Captain America. So he reports directly to him, which means they're going to have a much closer bond than I think he and Tony Stark are going to have because Vision is not really Jarvis. So... Um, that just means that he's not necessarily going to have the same type of connection that we would assume that Vision would have to Tony Stark. Now, the reason that I put Hawkeye on Iron Man's side is because I really want to see a, a conflict between Hawkeye and Black Widow. I want to see those two on opposing sides. Much more than I want to see everybody else. Because we've seen throughout Avengers and even Avengers 2 that... Captain America and Tony Stark, well, yes, they are always after the same goals. They don't always see eye to eye. And so we've seen them kind of butting heads. With the exception of Hawkeye under complete mind control, we haven't seen Hawkeye and Black Widow go against one another. And that was complete mind control. That wasn't of his own free will and volition. So, I mean, I, I really, that's what I want to see. I want to see these people who we have known as a close-knit family to really be torn apart. You know, because, I mean, they tried to do that in Adventures Age of Ultron, and they did succeed to a, to an extent. But, 
you know, th this is the one I really think is going to tear everybody apart and really put everybody on opposing sides. Now, I do hope that this sets up the future of Phase 3, although Phase 3 is comprised mostly of new films. Um, I mean, you have Thor Ragnarok, which is not even going to be affected by Civil War, at least not likely. Um, you know, and then you got Doctor Strange, which we're probably not going to meet until the Doctor Strange movie, although there is rumors that he may show up in the Iron Fist TV series on Netflix, which I think that'd be actually kind of cool, um, but it would be a waste, I think. I don't know what you would do, and also I don't want a major uh, Hollywood blockbuster character action comic book character to be introduced in a television show. Um, I want to see him in the full glory on the big screen with all the budget and special effects behind him to produce the best quality product that they can instead of being hamstrung by a television budget. So that's just my worry and my fear. Um, but I'm still amazed at the, the size and scope of this movie. I cannot wait to see what they do with this movie because also the Russo brothers who did Winter Soldier are doing this movie and they are also doing Infinity War. So this is really going to be the film that bridges the gap. Now, Chris Evans also talked about last week, he said that it's going to be, uh, this movie really does bridge the gap with Infinity War. This really does lead right into Infinity War and Infinity War itself is actually going to be a nine month shoot, which to me is absolutely incredible. Now, I was actually surprised that it was only going to be nine months because some big movies, like you look at Batman v Superman, that movie had, I think, an eight or nine month shooting schedule. And that was one film. So, I mean, Avengers Infinity War, with the amount of characters that they have, I think nine months is being generous. You know, I think that it's probably going to be 11 or 12 even. Unless they're able to, to have a very tight-knit ship, or they're shooting multiple units at the same time. It, there's there's lots of ways that they could do it. This is very, very difficult and nerve-wracking, to say the least. But with this cast, I mean, good God. This is massive. I mean, again, how is this not an Avengers movie? You know, the, the only problem that I have with this is that if we get Baron Helmut Zemo and we get Crossbones as the actual villains, well... Are we going to see Civil War be completely rectified in the first two-thirds of the movie? And then they're all going to band together at the end to go and fight off this nefarious villain? I hope that doesn't happen because Civil War is such a massive storyline. It could go throughout the entire um, Phase 3 and have Infinity War Part 1 be the culmination of Civil War. They, they could do that. It's a big enough story. So, well, I hope, that's kind of what I hope that they do, actually, to be completely honest. I really do hope that by the end of this movie, there are still divided lines and that we don't exactly know who's going to be with who um, or if, if anything is actually going to be rectified. So that's what I really want to see. That's what I'm hoping for. And the, the little bits of promotional art that we've gotten out for the film so far have been really cool. I'm digging Cap's new suit. I love Iron Man's new suit. I think it looks really cool with the like small rectangular uh, gem in, in the center of the chest. So I'm excited for it. But let me know what you guys think about this massive cast announcement and the fact that Captain America Civil War is actually filming now. Which means we should start to get some... Uh, uh, some set photos or things like that within the coming weeks. So we're going to get a better idea of what we're in for with this film. But as it stands right now, Captain America Civil War excitingly opens on May 6th, 2016. But if we do get more information about this topic, then I will definitely update you guys on here. As it was announced last week, Josh Trank has actually left the uh, upcoming Star Wars anthology film 2. Now... This is really surprising to me because I've been one of the people out there, I've been very much advocating for him and, and, and defending all of these allegations that have come out about him, about how, you know, his, his demeanor and his, uh, you know, like his demeanor on set of Fantastic Four, um, the reports that he, you know, came to set high and was intoxicated and that he destroyed sets and all this kind of stuff. I never bought into that and I still don't. Um, I still don't believe, first off, one of the reports that came out, reports from a close source to THR, which I don't believe to begin with because THR's had a hate on for this guy for a while. Um, one of the things that they stated in there was that his it wasn't him who caused damage to a set. It was his dogs that he had or his, his parents' dogs or something like that that caused over $100,000 in damage to the house that he was staying in. Was it Clifford? Like, how the hell could dogs cause $100,000 in damage unless they had, like, a Fabergé egg that a dog knocked over, which, in the first place, why the hell do you have a Fabergé egg? It's 2015. 
I mean, Jesus Christ, we're past the point of people owning something just to say that they own it so that that means that they're rich. Like, come on. Really? Like, whatever the dogs had to have destroyed, it's irresponsible for a person to even have that in a house to begin with. But I'm, I'm not even convinced that that even happened. There is no way that dogs could cause $100,000 in damage unless they were the size of the goddamn house. So that report and the fact that that got picked up by everybody went around as fact really pissed me off because... A, we don't know that it's fact. Every time that there's been something that's come out uh, that I've talked about on this show, if it has been fact, I've mentioned that it's fact. But if it's not fact, I've talked about how it is speculation and conjecture, which this clearly is, yet they are talking about it as fact. And that pisses me off because we have no real idea as to what happened. Now, there have been lots of reports that have gone around. One of the reports was that, you know, Disney and Trank just did not see eye to eye with the project and they left amicably. The other report was that he had, he, they were having way too much trouble dealing with him uh, and reeling him in creatively, so they had to replace him. They basically said that, you know, they forced him off the project and made him not show up to um, Star Wars Celebration, which, you know, I, I never believed that he was sick to begin with. That, that you know, w worst flu of my life. I mean, come on. But um, still, like, it... it to me, it's just very weird. And, and this was his exact quote. He goes, I want to pursue some original creative opportunities. I don't, I don't know if I believe that. I mean, it's Star Wars. Like any filmmaker worth their salt would love to direct a Star Wars movie, especially an anthology movie. Because at that point, you don't have as much to adhere to. Yes, you have to acknowledge certain things that have happened within the context of the universe. Only if... They affect your story. So, I mean, his movie supposedly was going to be a Boba Fett movie. Now, we don't know when it was going to be set. We don't know if this was going to be between episodes four and five, uh, or sorry, episodes five and six. Um, we don't know if it was going to be set between three and four. Like, we don't know where this movie was going to be set. We don't even know for sure if it is going to be a Boba Fett movie. That, again, is another rumor that people are running around with. Um, and I do like that. I do think that would be kind of cool, especially if it's a movie set after the events of episode six, which is what I would like um, to showcase the fact that, you know, Boba Fett, the, the most feared bounty hunter in the universe uh, or in the galaxy, um, wasn't just accidentally knocked down into a giant digestive worm. Um, but still, going back to all this stuff, I mean, why would... Now, let's put this in context. If these reports were true and Tr and Trank acted like this on set of Fantastic Four, why then, when the first trailers were coming out for the movie, would Fox put him and Simon Kinberg front and center? Why would they have them do like an hour-long interview with Collider the day before the uh, trailer was going to drop that got circulated everywhere? Why would they have him front and center in the marketing? They wouldn't. If, a, if somebody like this did what they said he did on a movie set, on a multi-million dollar investment, they would not risk that, especially with that information leaking out, they would not risk that for a multiple hundred million dollar film. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. That's like, a, uh, you know, right now with all of the, the police shootings that are going around. That would be like having one of those cops come out and do the press announcement and say, everything is okay, we are handling this internally. It, it, they wouldn't do that. It makes no sense for the studio to do that, especially a company like Fox, who up until a few years ago had the most idiotic CEO in the history of Hollywood. I mean, Tom Rothman was a goddamn moron. I hate... Oh. He makes some of the worst decisions for franchises, yet all he is consumed with is franchises. Like, it, it's the biggest oxymoron, and I stress moron a lot when it comes to Tom Rothman. But getting back to this, th there's no reason why they would have him front and center in the, pub in the, the marketing of the film if these things were true. I do think that there was something that happened outside of what we are aware of that actually caused Trank to fall off. Here's one thing that I actually thought of that it, it's unlikely, but it might actually be the cause. Josh Trank may have had a multi-picture deal with Fox. So with them already scheduling Fantastic Four 2 for summer 2017, I think it's June or July 2017, he may be locked in for that movie. They might have seen, and, and with everything being put together on Fantastic Four and seen, you know, what he was able to do, 
and say, okay, you know what? We actually do want to exercise our right to get this guy to come back to come and do the sequel, which would make make it so that he couldn't even start really getting involved in the Star, the Star Wars movie until 2017, which only gives him about five, six months of pre-pro, and then he has to go in and do full, uh, start full-on production. The, Lucasfilm's not going to allow that. So this, to me, almost seems like it's a conflict of interest, which I think is more likely than his dogs causing $100,000 in damage. I mean, that has always never sat right with me. I never believed that, because originally they said that he did it, and that he also destroyed sets, that he was high on set. I mean, come on. The studio would have got him replaced immediately if that was the case. And also, nobody in their... Well, I mean, I don't know if Josh Trank is in his right mind, but nobody in their right mind in the Hollywood system would act like that on set unless they were someone to the uh, uh, to the point of Francis Ford Coppola, you know, or um, or Stanley Kubrick when they were at their heights and they were kind of, you know, Stanley Kubrick was kind of going crazy and um, Francis Ford Coppola was literally getting high a lot. Um, but it, it just doesn't make any sense to me that this is the exact reason, the one that came out in, on The Hollywood Reporter, that that was why he got kicked off the film or that he, why that's why he left the film. It never made sense to me. There's no way that he would have got this far into production. There's no way that Lucasfilm would have kept him attached until just a few weeks ago. There, there's no way. These reports came out last fall. There's no way they would have kept him on until now. You know, they they would have got somebody to come in and actually uh, move forward with production instead of keeping him on until now and then having to get somebody else to come in to say, okay, now we're going to start over and these are actually my ideas. They would have done that months ago. So I didn't buy into any of this stuff. It's unfortunate that Josh Trank left, but we don't know the exact reason as to why it happened. And I'm not one to jump the gun and say that, oh, it's because, you know, he's an idiot and he's a moron and, you know, he doesn't know how to conduct himself in public and he's very antisocial and all this. I, I never believed any of that for a second. Josh Trank with working on Chronicle and those in the THR article, they also said, oh, and by the way, Chronicle was fixed in editing. Um, yeah, I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe that for one second at all. Chronicle, Chronicle was not the type of movie that could have been fixed in post. The only reason it could have is, is if the original script that was included had, you know, a half an hour of extra scenes that they actually shot and put in that just didn't make it. But you can't tell me that that movie was fixed in editing. I'm sorry. That movie was too good to have been fixed in editing. It must have been pretty good, and then they went into editing and really made it good. Like, that. that's all that I can see from that. So I've never believed any of this garbage. Um... And I'm still thoroughly excited for Fantastic Four. I think this movie looks like it's going to be great. I think it's a refreshing take on the superhero genre. I think it is something new. Uh, and a lot of people say, well, we've seen that, you know, dropping from a plane sequence. It's like, yeah, you've also seen people walk through a door. You've seen people shoot a gun. Yet you always go to a movie and see those people doing that and enjoy yourself. So the fact that we are seeing things that have been done before, we live in an age where how many, you know, 1500 movies are released every year or 1200 movies are released every year we're getting to a point now where we have to start recycling things but putting a new spin on it and that is the whole point of movie making that's the whole point of storytelling taking something that already exists and then making a new spin on it so you talk about uh well i'm not even going to get into that but anyway like it's i'm getting sick and tired of these fanboy haters coming out there and one of the biggest ones to me and it, it keeps going back now they they alternate from week to week but it's screen junkies they are haters. They are just haters. I love watching their shows. Don't get me wrong. But they are haters. Like you look at Screen Junkies and then you look at Schmoes No. And they are two completely different while also being the same at the same time. You know, I mean, you look at Screen Junkies, they will rarely, if ever, give anything the benefit of the doubt because half of their team is just made up of comedians. And they are just trying to get the joke out. Whereas Schmoes No, they're actually just giving their natural opinion. You know, I mean... When I watch Screen Junkies, the guys that I respect the most are Spencer Gilbert, um, uh, Dan Merle, and um, eh, I was going to say Andy, but Andy sometimes, and he's even come out and said it before that he's a fanboy hater. Um, you know, I mean, like, I absolutely can't stand Roger Barr. 
I can't stand him at all because he comes out and just like, what's the most lavish, outlandish idea that I can come up with out there that nobody would ever go and see, but I'm going to make them believe that everybody out there is going to want to go and see it. Not to mention he kind of looks like a pedophile. Um, you know, Nick Mundy, he's really funny, but to me, he kind of goes a little too far because, again, he's a comedian and it's, it, he's just doing what he thinks is right for the character that he's created on this show. And... That I just wish that they were a little bit more honest. That that's my only thing. I know I've gone off on a little bit of a tangent on that, um, but yeah, no, like Spencer and Dan, I never feel that they are giving an answer to try to get a response from other people. I think they're actually giving their natural, genuine answer, um, and that's what I wish that all of these sites would do. But half the time, I think that they are just playing a character, which really does tick me off because I go out there to try to get their opinion. I don't go out there to try to get, ooh, what are we gonna do to get the most hits? You know. I was going to say his name, but I'm not. Devin Faraji. There, I said it. Ah! But anyway, Fantastic Four. Getting back to this. Fantastic Four is going to be opening up on August 7th of this year. The currently untitled Star Wars anthology film that is supposed to be opening up in 2018 is still without a director, but Lucasfilm will be moving quickly to try to find that director. I would assume probably by D23 we're going to have an announcement, which is going to be August. So we got a couple of months. You know, they got a couple of months to try to find the right director, and they've probably got people lining up to do this, which is a, another kind of wrinkle in this whole thing as to why he actually left. But, you know, only time will tell uh, as to what actually happened and transpired during those events. But as it stands right now, we're going to be getting more information about these movies in the next couple of months. So when we do, I will definitely update you guys on here. After debuting its first trailer at CinemaCon, uh, we now have our first look at the upcoming reboot of Vacation. Now, it's it's sort of a reboot, but it's also a sequel. It does take place as a continuation because uh, Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo come back as Clark Griswold and uh, Helen Griswold. And Ed Helms is actually taking the role of Rusty Griswold, which I as soon as I heard that, I thought, you know what? This could actually work. Um, the one... Thing that I was curious about was the directors, um, uh, Goldstein and, um, oh, I can't remember the other guy's name, but uh, I was very curious to see what these guys were going to be up to. And knowing that this film is a hard R, the first trailer that we get is a red band trailer. I mean, I love that it's, it's not a watered down family film at all. This is a family adventure movie, but this is for adults. And this looks hilarious. Like I'm... <laughs> You know, this and Masterminds comes out within two weeks of, of one another, and I, I can't wait. This is going to be a great summer for comedy, and I, I feel, I hope, I hope. Um, but yeah, Ed Helms playing the grown-up Rusty Griswold. Like, there's the one scene in the trailer when they're at the restaurant, and the kid comes up, and he's like, you know, there, there was a hole in the side of the bathroom stall, and he's like, well, son, you just found yourself a glory hole. And she's like, Rusty? And he's like, yep, nope, all right, let's go. And it just, that, that reminded me of Clark. Like, that reminded me of how... He acted in the original Vacation movies and how Rusty really has taken after his dad. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the self-referential humor in this, you know, um, they're like, you really want to redo your vacation from 30 years ago? And the kid's like, I've never even heard of the, real vac or the original Vacation. He's like, well, this vacation will stand on its own. Trust me. And so, like, the self-referential humor in it I, I thought was great. It lets everybody know, listen, we are aware of the problems that are the, the public perception of this movie. Don't worry. You know, I mean, we only got to see him in there for a hot second, but uh, Charlie Day as this crazy river rafting guide. I can't wait to see what he's able to do. You got Keenan Michael Key, or Keegan Michael Key, sorry, from Key and Peel, who I still don't uh, exactly know who he's playing in the movie. Um, or I might have read it a while ago, but then forgot about it. I don't want to know until I see the movie. Um, but man, I mean, and then obviously, the icing on the cake, the Chris Hemsworth sequence at the end. When he walks in, he's like, so the remote, so you got power, you got volume, all right? And then he just literally pauses for a good six seconds. And just like, just silence and just looking around with a giant grin on his face. He's like, okay. And just says it so softly, he just walks away. Like it was perfect, perfect comedic timing. I am sold on this movie. I cannot wait to see it. It looks like it's going to be a worthy successor to the original Vacation. I just hope they don't go the same way that they did with the originals and, you know, get eventually to Vegas Vacation, which I did not like. Um, although, we got to find Cousin Eddie. We got to get a new Cousin Eddie. I love that one. Zoomer's talking about the plate in his head. You know, <laughs> all of a sudden he just... 
and then he taps it and it goes back. <laughs> I mean, I remember when I saw that the first time in Vegas vacation, I almost peed myself. I was laughing so hard. So um, I'm excited. And I mean, just face it, Chris Hemsworth's character's name is Stone Crandall. <laughs> I mean, how do you not laugh when you hear a name like that? <laughs> His name is Stone. His first name, like, I can't, I can't even do it. His first name is Stone. <laughs> And he definitely showed a lot of himself. Let's put it that way. So if you guys haven't checked out the Red Band trailer, click in the link in the description of this video below, and you'll be able to watch it and laugh your ass off. This movie looks hilarious. Hey, look, I found a dart. <laughs> like, are you crazy? And so, no, I'm excited for it. The movie's going to be opening up everywhere on July 31st. I believe it does have early screenings on July 29th. Um, so be on the lookout for this movie. We're probably going to get another look at this film before it comes or before it's officially released. So probably near the end of June, we'll get another new trailer for the movie. But damn, I la I did not think I was going to laugh as much as I did. Oh, and the the best part of the trailer at the very end, the callback to the original movie with Holiday Road, and he, he, he looks over and sees her driving, and she gets slammed by an eighteen wheeler. <laughs> I mean, that's something we've seen a lot before in other films, yes, but it was really nice to see them include that sequence and then have it be completely destroyed and ruined, you know, in the w way only a Griswold vacation can ruin something. So I thought it was great. Th this movie opens up at the end of July, July 31st. If we do get more information about this topic, I will definitely update you guys on here. Well, that'll about do it for this episode of Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Go ahead and click that subscribe button there in the bottom corner. You can get updates whenever a new video is posted. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your movie updates. And also give, us, give our Facebook page a like at facebook.com slash movie news with Nicholson. If you guys ever have a topic or question you'd like to have talked about on the show, you can go ahead and put a comment in the comment section, or you can email me at movienewswithnicholson at gmail.com. And on every Friday episode, I'll try to get to as many as I can. But until next time, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.